is Yvonne Spear and I'm your host. I am the president of the Multicultural Community Project. The Multicultural Community Project is a group of business owners. We get together and we network to teach each other best practices in business from a business owner to business owner perspective. Tonight we are talking about our signature annual event, Jazzin in July. Jazzin in July is a great night of entertainment with Chicago's greatest jazz professionals as well as we feature Chicago restaurants, caterers, small businesses, and non-for-profits in attendance. We do this every year to help fund our annual back to school project that we, our goal is to give out book bags and goods and books and we give out book bags and we also give out school supplies in a party atmosphere to children in need in the community. Tonight I have two guests with me, our, one of our board members, Barbara Thompson, and we also have one of our performers, Lawandia. Hello ladies, how are you? Doing well, Doing thank, well. You. Yes. thank you. So tell me a little bit about yourselves. Let's start with Barbara. Hi, my name is Barbara Thompson. I was originally born in Seattle, Washington. My father relocated us to Chicago, and I've been on 47th Street for over 40 years. So I have a fist in the community. I've been president of um, Lake Park East Tennis Association. I'm a mother of four. I have a daughter in law school, and I have a, two daughters in college and one teenager. Um, I am also a wife and I am a non for profit organization where I help youth and I help uh, homeless people. I have a ministry where I feed the homeless every Sunday. I give them chili. So I feel like it's a soul to the heart. And then me and my husband also run B&G Catering Service where we do specialized catering and allergy free by B&G where we do non fattening stuff, all natural no AIDS, no cholesterol. We try to teach the community that we are what we eat. And as myself, I've lost over 100 pounds in compliment of doing these things. I live by what I eat. So now I teach my kids how to cook better. I use um, all ground turkey products. I use no red meat. Oh, that's great. And how long have you and your husband been married? Uh, we've been we we've been we've been together for f over forty years, mm -hmm. um, but we've been married um, physically by the law by twenty years. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And this is Lawandia. Yes. Tell me something about you. Let's see that you don't already know. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you said, I'm Lawandia, a um, global singer, songwriter, recording artist. Uh, doing uh, quite a bit of uh, music around town and also uh, nationally and internationally as well. Um, I don't think that my record is as long as Barbara's in terms of all of what I have accomplished, but it's more so within the uh, music uh, industry. Um, in addition to, uh, again, singing locally uh, on, on the national realm as well as international, I also have my uh, CD out, which I'm so, so happy about. It's mm -hmm. called My Message. Got some really nice songs on there. Um, in addition to that, I uh, tend to lend my voice to organizations such as yours, uh, more so because I, I'm passionate about you know people. I'm passionate about uh, awareness, uh, and wherever I can uh, help out, yeah, I uh, take that uh, uh, role. Uh, I, I started uh, performing uh, early on, basically because my uh, sister, uh, Sherry, she you know would uh, she loved the way I sang and so she would go out and she would tell others mm -hmm. that you know her Word sister sang mouth. absolutely yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. and from there uh, I began singing at the Cotton Club oh, okay wow. downtown yes. Chicago mm -hmm. right okay. See, absolutely yeah. I knew him well yeah. knew him well and and uh, Jimmy Carwash Spinks uh, mm -hmm. uh, these guys offered me back you know on several occasions and from there Jimmy uh, Car Wash, we used to call him Car Wash. Mm -hmm. He would take, he back actually took me up under his wings and started mm -hmm. taking me to various um, uh, venues and so forth, getting me uh, uh, accustomed to singing to live music. Because mm -hmm. other than that, you know, we only sung to the radio. Yeah, right. 
and uh, so after singing to uh, to the radio and then seeing the difference of singing with a live band mm -hmm. it was a matter of learning where to come in mm -hmm. okay. yeah and and uh, uh, and then also learning what key uh, learning uh, what actually would best suit your audience so it wasn't just something that you like but you also had to have in mind your audience as well mm -hmm. so uh, you know from there uh, I, I went on to uh, catching the ear of one Sony producer um, and, and, and then just moving forward. But through it all, I decided to stay, though, independent. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's wonderful. So tell me, ladies, uh, what brings you to this particular event? What attracts you to this and what we do? Well, I like to, the idea of multicultural. That means a many variety of race and relations. And, and I feel as though that we need to come together because when we bleed, we all bleed the same color that is red. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have any prejudice among us, we can get together and we can move the world, the universe. And we have to teach our kids mm -hmm. that everybody takes the whole universe to make the world, not just black, white. So when you say multicultural, that means that all, all different races, it's like a, the flowers over here, it's all colors, but everybody got their individual. So that's why I liked about it. Oh, okay. Right. Well, well, me personally, it's because of the kids. Yeah. You know, I I have a passion for my kids because they they're so vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, and and impressionable as well. And if uh, we talk, we do not, meaning the adults, do mm -hmm. not actually get to them before the streets or the media. We don't know what we're going to have on our hands. Absolutely. So I'm loving it when you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, education. Yeah, getting absolutely. these different type of packages and so together it's like let me help out yeah. wherever I can yeah absolutely one of the things that I liked about this and putting this event together I'm a lover of all music and I'm a lover of Chicago music because I was born and bred here so I have a stake in my community but if I can circle the wagons with business owners and non for profit and other people to use this as a platform to be able to fund something else and give back to our community yeah. because our kids don't yeah. identify with historical role models True. and they seem so far away that they almost seem like mythical mm -hmm. creatures mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. When you think about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Gandhi, all of these people, they seem so far away, but when you see someone that looks like you. Yeah, absolutely. they walk the same street, absolutely. grew up in the same houses that you did, went to that same elementary school. Mm -hmm. They are more identifiable to what you experience every day of life. Whereas when you have people that come from outside of our communities, mm -hmm. no matter what color mm -hmm. they are, all the problems are the same. Our children don't identify with us. So therefore, when you know everybody has to let down their guard about the class system and everything else so that they can identify with our children. And one way to do that is to get everybody out. We have a great night yeah, of entertainment. And then a couple of weeks later, instead of the usual follow up with the meeting after the meeting, yeah. we meet at a location. We have book bags to give to the kids, have them come out and have a good time but a one-on-one yeah. -on -one experience with people that look like them that'll say, you know, I'm a business owner. Right. I grew up right down mm -hmm. the street. I have a stake in this community. Mm -hmm. And by looking at you and others that look like them, mm -hmm. they could say, you know what, maybe this yeah. is something that I could model. do too. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is something I could take that abandoned mm -hmm. building. Maybe I can open wow. a store there. Absolutely. I can do something and it is a solution to the economic violence that's out there and a way out because people can actually see individuals i mean you know instead of oh that's the lady that sells the chili when you know someone's story yeah and you know that you know you're not pigeonholed into that job mm -hmm. that pays eight dollars an hour because that's all you can see mm -hmm. as opposed to seeing wait a minute i could say Mm -hmm. I can cook, I can do a lot of things, yeah. and I can start my own business. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And those are the ideals that I want to put in those children's heads. Because sometimes college isn't for everybody. That's true. It may not be a solution for right now, but it, it is an emergency state with our children mm -hmm. that they have to find some way that they have to eat tomorrow. Yeah, but they know, have to have solutions and they have to have shelter tomorrow. So our Jazzing in July is our signature event every year. And we have had everybody from Dina Allen Spivey, who is a three-time Apollo winner. We've had uh, the Chicago NFL alumni, Charlie Brown, his band perform. We've had several different performers. Uh, Anthony Norman last year. Uh, Wanda Lewis has a performed at some of our events that we all come together, we pull our talents, and we produce an amazing event experience and showcase our hometown exactly. Sounds cool. and from the perspective of people who live here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and show that it's not everything bad that you see about Chicago on television Absolutely. because Best you see world. who killed who and how bad Chicago mm -hmm. that you can see that mm -hmm. we have great people, great neighborhoods, beautiful entertainment. It's not always freezing here and that Chicago can be a community of people that are connected together and people can connect together for a great cause. Right. You know something mm -hmm. if I can, what was really interesting that you said earlier mm -hmm. about the children, mm -hmm. um, number one as we all do, mm -hmm. uh, children as well as adults but even more so again yes. children is that uh, we need number one a um, support system. Absolutely. You know in addition children are so much in need of a role model mm -hmm. uh, and 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 it is great that you know individuals like yourself mm -hmm. see the need and actually are putting forth action to do something about it because we can mm -hmm. always talk a lot Absolutely. of people do a lot of talking yeah. you mm -hmm. know but it, you know doing it, you know taking action mm -hmm. and um, that's why you know I want it so so badly to be a part of uh, this particular mm -hmm. you know event because it, it basically mm -hmm. it says look I, I'm doing something about it I'm not just talking about Absolutely. it you know so so yes, yes the support system is so Absolutely. so necessary and this organization was actually born out of uh, business owners mm -hmm. and getting the information that you need to make your business more successful and best practices in business because everybody can not afford to go to that university and always what is book theory versus mm -hmm. practical knowledge a lot of times True. the university and I don't bash universities in education everybody needs that but they will teach you everything in theory mm -hmm. but that professor has not been out there actually cultivating yeah. and building a business he's teaching based on theory mm -hmm. I can sit with a business owner like Barbara like yourself and have a realistic problem that I need an answer Absolutely. to. And because everybody's not open to be a mentor, you can be a mentor just by saying a few words. Mm -hmm. So we had started a series of networking events that we have people come out, have a great time, and speak on a topic, mm -hmm. and they would speak to that audience based on their practical knowledge. And it's a great thing even in a fun environment and everybody starts looking for something to write with. Wow, yeah, mm -hmm. that means that it is. And connecting yeah. with each other yeah. mm -hmm. and saying, you know what, this is great information because when you're in an honest room with honest people to say, you know, I had this problem and I'm trying to do that, and somebody gives you a simple answer, yeah. it's like that Oprah light bulb minute. Yeah. Yeah. And when you say, wow, I didn't know it was that easy. I just went to Barnes and Noble and I spent yeah. a lot of money on books mm -hmm. and you know all the great names couldn't mm -hmm. give me the answer but the thing is it is always a pleasure to meet a business owner because I love to pick your brains I want to know that knowledge yeah. and we all can't afford that $300 an hour consultant true <clears throat> and that consultant may not understand us oh, because right, of absolutely. psychology that goes mm -hmm. into that and how you relate to your business may be different than that perspective of someone else's business. So that's one of the things I love to invite business owners 
because I love having conversations like this. Um, so, Barbara, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, in this time period, I know you've done a lot with catering, but you also deal a lot with people. How do you deal, sometimes you have people with so many different walks of life, and, you know, food is for the soul, so how do you deal with the other things without them weighing you down? Well, I could look at it like this. You have to multitask. Mm -hmm. And if you're a woman, you know, you have to be a mother. You have to be a pastor. You have to do everything. So, first of all, I try not to judge anyone because God is the final judge. Mm -hmm. And I like to treat people the way I want to be treated. Do mm -hmm. unto others as you have them do unto you. And everybody is a human being. That's the one race we all are human beings. We're not, you know, we're black, we're multicultural, we're multi talented. And you know, in the old days, when we needed money, yeah. what we do? Mm -hmm. Fundraisers. Yes. You know, we need to pay rent. We have rent parties. We sold some cookies, <laughs> snow cones. Yes. And my father was an entrepreneur of ice cream. He worked it as a spray painter for some being over 25 years. Mm -hmm. My dad told me, a job stands for just over broke. Mm -hmm. You gotta find something that you're passionate with and that's where you're gonna make your money at. Absolutely. So I learned how to cook food at a young mm -hmm. age and I just took it on from there. I've worked at Motorola, I've been CNA, University of Illinois, University of Chicago. I had all kind of jobs so I've been in that arena so I have a feel of feeling everybody. But my passion is children mm -hmm. because children are innocent and they need to know because back in the day when I was growing up, it was the neighborhood that raised us. When the street lights got on, we had to be in the house. Yes. Now we have social media, mm -hmm. the kids have Facebook, and they're learning faster than ever. So they have to be shown different avenues so they can go different paths. Because if we keep them on the path they're on now, they're going to destroy it. And who's going to take care of us? Absolutely. Absolutely. I also feel the same way. I'm passionate about entrepreneurship. And in my history, my, my actual education is fashion merchandising. That's what I went to college for. I majored in tailoring in high school because my father always said, get a trade, get a trade. That trade will feed you no matter what. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I went to the Academy of Merchandise and Design and I went through that and I also got a job in retail. But when I got my job in retail back in the 80s, it was very stigmatized. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. they did not hire people that looked like me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people that looked like me worked in the dressing room. Oh, wow. We worked doing shipment. We worked behind the mm -hmm. scenes or we could be a cashier. Mm -hmm. But in management, we couldn't be there. So therefore, in order to move up that ladder, I switched jobs a lot. Okay. But the funny thing was, when I got into the management, what I really thought I wanted, I hated that job. <laughs> and the thing about it, because I do 100%, I, get, I kept getting promoted because retail wow. didn't pay me a lot of money, so I needed to mo the money and I kept getting promoted. I'm like, how do I get getting promoted and getting these job offers? And I hate this job. Wow. And every six months, every year, every two years, I was changing jobs. So I realized it wasn't going to get better mm -hmm. by switching company. I needed to ch switch profession. Yeah. And so I took a low paying job. Um, it, it's a funny story. <clears throat> the ex I was with at the time was not happy. I went from a $50,000 a year job and I begged for a chance for a job as a verifier for Illinois Vehicle Insurance. Okay. And at the time, I was the regional tra training manager for the Lane Bryant Corporation. And they said, are you sure you want this job? And I was like, if you give me a chance, wow. I won't really because do a good job. Because you were passionate about it. Yes. But the thing is, because I had such a history doing this, nobody would give me the mm. opportunity doing something else. So I always said if I started my own business, yeah. I wanted to break down those barriers and let people know they could be anything that they Absolutely. want to be. Absolutely. No matter how you look, you don't have to look, you know, 
model thin. You can look however you do and be yourself. Just as long as you have the wherewithal. And, and be smart maintain. and be passionate mm -hmm. about what you do. Mm -hmm. It's a misconception that you need a lot of money to start a business. You need passion. True. And Thank that's God. what we're all about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I, you know something, and just piggybacking also what Brenda was saying as well about your dad, mm -hmm. because my, my, my dad also was an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. more so because um, there was no opportunity. Yeah. So he created his own yeah. when it was not, you know, yeah. um, mm -hmm. the, 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 the right thing mm -hmm. necessarily to do. Yes. He started off um, at Maxwell Street. You know, we called it something else, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and so. Uh, from there, here's what happened. I also, with, as well as my other brothers and sisters, they took that uh, opportunity to also become entrepreneurs. Mine was uh, grafted within the music uh, okay. area, mm -hmm. and, 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 and within the music, it was really tough. Okay. And right now, we're going to go to break, but we'll be right back. Please stay tuned. We have some important information that we want to relate to you, and please stay tuned. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Yvonne Spear, President of Multicultural. We would love to invite you to Jazzin in July. For further information, feel, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my direct number is 773-733-9274. Or you can email me at Yvonne S. Spear at gmail.com. Now I would like to introduce Lawandia, who will be performing at Jazzin in July. Thank you.
seconds. Okay. No one can tell me, boy, that I'm pretending. Ooh, hey, and why should I play silly, silly games? Cause love's not a play. Questions, people. Okay, ready? And as well, I would like to say thank you to Yvonne for having me here. Oh, my love. Hey. Ooh. No one can tell me, boy, that I'm Love has a meaning 